Hey friends, so I'll wait a few minutes for people to join so that I don't have to um, re-answer questions. It's been a long day, I know I look great. Um, so hopefully, hey Deborah. There's little bubs. He is not very happy right now. <laughs> he wants out. I'm at the church, doing mutual, doing church stuff, just trying to live, live my life, being a single mom. Okay, great. We've got 22 viewers. Okay, so I just talked to Ammon. He called me. We talked four times. He was literally tortured, tortured for 13 hours with cuffs behind his back, as tight as they could be. He said it was cutting off the circulation on his, in his wrists. Right now, um... There's so much to tell you, so much to tell you. I hope I can get it all in. If not, then I will write it in the comments. Um, so the story is this. He was laying in bed. He wasn't quite asleep yet, but um, he had his shirt hanging off the bed, and he didn't think anything about it. He wasn't defying policy. He didn't know that you couldn't hang your shirt from the bunk, not to mention that half the pod does this, okay? So yes, they did single Ammon out. He was singled out on purpose. In fact, I wonder if it wasn't premeditated. But, um, so he, the, the shirt was hanging down, and, um, the guard came over and said, uh, that he could not, um, have his shirt hanging down, and Ammon said, well, what what's the big deal about that and he said um, well it's our policy and it's our procedures and he said well okay so he took the shirt the shirt away and Ryan said came in and he got involved and he said well I can't understand what the big deal is Can you say hi <laughs> I can't understand what the big deal is about it's a shirt and he said I don't care it's policy and um, so Ryan, so Ammon tried to grab the shirt back because if you don't have a shirt in the morning, then they don't give you, they, they won't give you breakfast. So, um, let's go over here on the grass, buddy. And so he tried to grab the shirt back and wasn't able to get it back. Then Ryan tried to grab the shirt back and he brushed, um, the guards, come here, buddy, the guards hand. And just literally brushed it. Didn't even mean to touch him, grabbing the shirt back. And the guy, the guard, which we, we're not going to include his name right now and hope they do the right thing. But um, the guard said that it was assaulting an officer. So didn't even touch him. And they are such liars at that jail because we called and they said that they didn't, I, I verified with them and I said, how big was the cell? And he said, it was about a three by three with it and it closes. So he was hunched over, um, in a shower stall, three by three shower stall, freezing. He was freezing. And, um, they, they videoed the entire thing. They literally beat him down. They, um, put their knees in his back and they put the, um, their fingers in his ears and just punched and punched and punched and hit him and kneed him and kicked him and um, just all of this while they're trying to handcuff him and same thing with Ryan but then um, they both put him in they were both put in the shower stalls and then about after an hour they released Ammon or Ryan and left Ammon in there so he was in there for a total of 13 hours. No food, no water. He was losing circulation on his in his arms. And he, the, he said that the guards said w that they are going to leave him in there for 72 hours. And he said to me, normally I'm not the type to assume things. And he said, but I, with the um, circulation being cut off on my arm, Elias, come over here. With the circulation being cut off on my arm and no food and water, he said, I, I don't know that I would have lived. I, 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 don't, I think I would have died. 
So, I'm just grateful for Ryan. I'm grateful for um, his constant watching over his brother and calling Angie and getting the word out. I'm so grateful for your phone calls. Um, there's there's so much that I, I am grateful for and I could go on and on and I'm in, a, I'm pub in, in public because I had to drop kids off at church functions. But um, he said that the, uh, he said that they filmed, so after 13 hours and all of our phone calls, I guess they decided to send in a team of SWAT people. I don't think they were SWAT people. I think they were probably um, guards that worked there, but they were in full tactical gear. And um, uh, forced Ammon out of the shower, grabbed him, and he said he couldn't even walk. He said he was weak. He had been hunched over and sat down, and he couldn't walk. And they were forcing him, and if he wasn't forcing, then they were kicking his legs and just being terrible to him and laughing and just being awful, filming the entire thing. So someone out there has a video of this. Because I said, do you think that there's cameras? And he said, oh, honey, they videoed me the entire time. So there's documentation of this. And um, he's, he said that um, they... Um, I lost my train of thought. They, oh, when they when they dragged him out of the shower after 13 hours, so 13 hours, um, with his hands behind his wrist or his back, and um, his wrists were so swollen the circulation was cut, cutting him off. He was starving. He was thirsty. He he was very weak. He said he got nauseous because of the pain. He said the pain was so horrendous, the cramping in his legs and his arms. He said his, his shoulder was dislocated. His wrist was dislocated, and he had to put it back in himself. Um, but when they threw him in the solitary uh, room, the se they call it segregation, but my friends... It is not only segregation, it is solitary. It is the whole, it is not just segregation. Um, that they threw him in there and they literally ripped all of his clothes off. And he was naked and um, they're filming him. And uh, you know, I don't care if you, the mean people out there call me a crybaby. Where is your empathy? Where's your compassion? I cannot under, I cannot believe the world we live in. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe the, the messages I received today. Anyways, I'm grateful for good people. I'm grateful for good Christian, God-fearing people. I wish I wasn't so emotional, but I guess I just love my husband so much. Anyways, so they stripped him of his clothes, and they shut the door. They took the cuffs off, and then shut the door. And, um, he said, I don't, I don't know, I don't know that there's anything that us men, fellow men, can do to, to, with this situation. He said, I think this is only something God can do. And he, he told me, he said, Lisa, tell people that I'm just not a very good prisoner. And um, I, you know, I just, he's like, tell him I'm sorry. And I just cannot believe that he's apologizing for their actions. And he, and he did say, he goes, you know, they don't even know that what they're doing, they are thinking what they're doing is wrong. They've been doing it for so long. Um... Anyways, I just, I want to thank you guys for your, for your prayers. He says he's very, very sore. His arms, he can't even, he can't even lift them up. Um, he's got, he's going to have bruises everywhere, he said. Um, he's swollen. 
he said his arms are swollen to the point where it looks like he's received dozens and dozens of bee stings. Um, just trying to remember everything he told me. He d it's just torture, you guys. He was just tortured. Tortured. And he said, you know, I see. I see exactly what they're doing. They're learning how to do it in here, and then they're going to do it to us out there. And he said, and it's not far. History has shown this. This has happened in concentration camps, in the Holocaust. And I sure hope that America is not going that direction. Um, I just, I'm grateful for your prayers. Please continue to pray for him. He said, he said, of course, honey, I don't want you to worry about me. I'm okay. I've got God with me. Anyways, thanks for everything you guys did today. I'm grateful. If I remember anything else, I hope I'll, I'll post it. Oh, I wanted to tell you that Kelly, he's going to call Kelly. So please listen to her. She does not, she doesn't have a, an agenda. Okay. I called her and I said, listen, Ammon's going to call you and fill and so that you can record the, your guys' phone call so that people can hear what happened. But I wanted you to hear it from me first because this is true. I can't believe some of the messages I got today. This can't be true. Well, <laughs> it is. I am living a real nightmare. My husband, Ryan, and many men are living a real nightmare. And I just want you guys to know that that how many other men are enduring this without without a voice I, and at what point I, I've also gotten messages like well you shouldn't have committed a crime well what about all those that didn't they still deserve this justice and and even if they did commit a crime they still deserve being treated this way God never intended it this way you know whose way this is this is Satan's way Force, any kind of force, is Satan's way. It is. That was the plan in heaven. God wanted agency. He wanted us all to have agency to choose to do the right. And, and Satan didn't. He wanted to force. He wanted to force us. And, I mean, it's very plain and simple to me. I see it. Um, I do see the only way that we might get out of this is with good lawyers. Everybody says, what are they doing? What are they doing? Well, they don't. Those gels, they don't listen to lawyers, people. I, I hate to say it. I've never lived this kind of life and endured this kind of hell. But they don't listen to lawyers. They listen to judicial um, people. So we need to be calling the judge. We need to be calling the U.S. Marshals. But they don't listen. They don't answer. They never call back. It, the only people and things we can do is, is petition God. It's all we can do. Um, or we will all be enduring this torture. And it's real. It's real. Um, he said he wanted to thank everybody for the calls. He had heard that there was many, many calls. Even though they say they can't do anything, they still call. They still, it makes a difference. The calls make a difference. Everybody's given the light of Christ. And so um, those people that are making those choices, they have the light of Christ in them. Or maybe they've been doing bad for so long that they just don't have the light of Christ. I don't know. But I know that I want to be completely on the other side where God is. And I even get to work hard at trying to forgive these people that just have evil in their heart. Um, okay, well, I just I th thank you. Please pray for Ryan and Ammon. Uh, they lied to them. That was the other thing. They lied to him. They deceived them. Ryan got taken in the hall first, and Ammon said, well, I, I want to see what they're doing to my brother. And the sergeant said, sure, you can. And so because he did, because he looked out the window, then they um, they disciplined Ammon. And then Ammon said, you guys are liars. And, and anyways, so if you call someone a liar, then I guess you get segregation. You get the whole anyways perhaps this is building us and making us better I don't know I pray God intervenes we need him he's the only one that can that can help the situation okay have a great night pass this around to everybody you know if they don't believe 
then it's not worth fighting, guys. It's not. Focus on the good. Uh, the messages of people saying, this can't be real. This doesn't happen. You're lying. I'm not. I'm not lying. I choose not to be a liar. In fact, I would love to not have to tell you about this kind of stuff. I never even wanted to believe that our world was this bad. But it is. Okay. Thanks for the uplifting messages and the love and the support and the phone calls and the lunch. I probably would have starved today if it weren't for Kelly. Pray. Pray for God's intervention. I think it's all that we can do. Okay. Love you guys. Listen to Kelly Stewart's um, feed. Ammon's going to be calling her. He's going to try. And then they're going to and they're going to do it live or they're going to record it. So you can hear it straight from straight from his mouth. And he's not a liar either, my friends. He's not. I know that a lot of us called and they did not tell the truth. They are the liars. They did not tell the truth. And it makes me sick. They lied on the documents about what really happened. They stretched the truth. All we have to say is show me the video. Everything in there is filmed. Obviously, they filmed my husband. Anyway, so I'm trying to try to petition the lawyers to at least get those videos. They should at least have have that. So, anyways, I'm grateful for all of the um, people joining. Right now, we've got 346. Um, this is truth. This is real. It happened. Um, Ammon said, don't worry about me. Tell everyone not to worry about me, but I'm grateful for their prayers because I felt God with me all day. Okay. Love you. Listen to Kel Kelly Stewart um, or Gavin. Listen, I know everybody has their opinions on them, but they are Ammon's voice right now. And when he calls, it's not their agenda. Believe me, guys, Ammon is strong enough and um, individual and independent enough to know what people's agendas are. Okay. So that's their, um, it's him. It's, ha it's Ammon talking and it's not an agenda. Okay. So there you go. There you have it. You can believe whatever you want, but when you hear my husband talk, it's because it's what he is coming from his heart and it's his agenda. It's his, it's the truth. Have a great day, night. Um, and we'll just get through this life one minute of it at a time. There's my sweet baby. She's not fit. Um, we'll see you later.